that. And it's like, no, this is so real. This is, it doesn't, yeah. We just want Miranda back and don't know what to do. I think that's, that's why we're doing this is we don't know what else to do. I think that's exactly what they want is they want us to just go, go away. away. Because go away so that they can just continue doing what they they're They don't know doing. who they're best. They don't know who we've been beforehand. They don't know how close we've been. And I do like, know a person die. that came to our house. This person came to our house and sat in our house for over seven weeks during the pandemic. And this is her husband now. And said, you have a very different, weird family. You're way too close. <laughs> and other people around us know the fact. Is we yeah, keep, we know that. that. People say that we are too yeah. close. We're, 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 we're weird that way. But we have a bond. We have a bond that we wish upon other people, that we can talk to each other no matter what. And somehow, some way, something changed our daughter in no way in the world that a religious organization that we can't control has controlled her now. It's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, March 4th. So this week I was inundated on my Instagram because it was like last week, I think on Friday or Saturday, that one of my subscribers, who by the way, thank you to this specific sub subscriber for bringing the attention to the story because I wouldn't have known it, known about it otherwise. Uh, I received a message that there was a video that had been published and it was like a live stream of, of a TikTok dancer um, who was talking about her sister. And I admit I'm not a huge TikTok watcher and I haven't really ever really been into the dance world. So I wasn't familiar when I saw the name, but I, I quickly watched the full video and it was uh, a, a woman named Melanie Wilkin and her parents, Kelly and Dean Wilkin. And they were talking about how their daughter and sister, Miranda, had was basically involved with a group and a religious group in California. And since joining the group had changed dramatically, was not contacting the family. Her entire life had been tightly controlled and she was basically not responding to anyone. She had stopped communicating with everyone in her life and they were very concerned. They shared this information, heart-wrenching information in a, I think it was almost a half an hour live stream where they answered questions and talked about their sort of just concern and need and desire to want to help get Miranda back. So that started this whole story, okay? So Melanie and Kelly and Dean say that Miranda got involved with this group, cuts contact with everyone, they're concerned. Melanie says during this live stream that she went to this church and she noticed that the church was very controlling and when she was unable to attend one service for church, they uninvited her to the church and she was no longer able to go. I had plans to pick up someone from the airport and it was conflicting with a service so I couldn't go it was just I had already had this plan for a while blah 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 and then it's like they were calling me calling me trying to get me to come in try to get me to cancel the plans try and I was like this is weird like why like it, it's gonna be okay I just can't go to one and then oh I wasn't invited to the next one because I missed the other one so then it's this whole the they're brainwashing you this mind game where it's like oh then i did something wrong so now i have to give all my time type thing and i was like this is not healthy and this is not normal if and then what i was telling miranda too is i was like if you want to go to this cool like and we were saying we won't we don't have to talk about it we don't have to do anything if you want to go awesome but like the church which doesn't even have a uh presence online is based in California with a pastor who is named Robert Shin. And the church is secretive, extremely secretive, by invite only. When the family was going to visit 
Miranda to get to see her, they would go to the church when they knew she was there and, and ring the bell and no one would answer. They would go to her house to see if she was there. No one would answer. There was just concern because she, uh, they claimed that on January 18th of 2021, she basically just cut contact with every single person in her life. All the while, she has been on a viral movement with this group of people. So this is where the viral part comes in. Do you know, and have you seen the videos of the guys dancing to Staying Alive? Yeah, I, I think it was in sometime this fall, one of my fr uh, followers, uh, someone I follow on Twitter was tagging all of these videos. And I was like, oh, these are so fun. And it was like two guys dancing in the street to Staying Alive. And I was like, how neat, like I haven't seen anything like this before. And I remember like going to Instagram and TikTok and looking at the people and I couldn't figure out whose names were whose because all of these people were tagged. And that was kind of like the end of it for me. But they have kind of taken over the media in a lot of different ways. Uh, they're a group of dancers. Uh, they're managed by 7M, who is actually the same group that has the church, same group of people. They have been dancing at LA Clippers games. I think they've, been, they've done some stuff at the LA Lakers. Ellen DeGeneres features these dancers all the time with Swift, and there has been tons of media like exposure, lots of brand deals. They were in a Corolla commercial. They've done Toyota stuff. They've been doing Express. They danced at the Super Bowl. It's been like they went from zero to like in the stratosphere, and many are professional dancers, but everyone sort of saw the uniqueness of these very polished uh, videos and thought, wow, this is so different because when you think of TikTok, you think of like the, the viral trend dances that literally everyone does. But these guys were doing something totally different. They were wearing different clothes, dancing to different music. So I think that aspect kind of caught people's attention. Um, over time, some of the fans noticed that the, the, the content was being recycled. It looked highly curated. Uh, but one thing that friends started to say and what Melanie and her parents said was that the social medias they didn't believe were being controlled by their sister and their daughter. And once Melanie shared that information, she encouraged anyone else that was impacted by this to come forward. That video live stream by Melanie opened up a like tidal wave of information and suddenly all these people started speaking out about their concerns about this group. So there are some key like dancers that are a part of this, uh, some that are from So You Think You Can Dance, some from World of Dance, others are more social media, others have been professional dancers that have gone on tours with the likes of like Janet Jackson and Madonna. And these are people that you might know or you might not know, I guess, if you're not in the world of dance, but they are, they are everywhere online right now in these viral videos. The dancers that are impacted by this, at first it was just, let's get Miranda out of this, and now it's turned into, wow, all of these dancers are involved in this. So Miranda got involved in the group, the family says, through her boyfriend, now husband, James Derrick, who goes by the dance name B-Dash. He actually was on World of Dance with his dance partner, Concrete, who is also in the same group managed by 7M. So B-Dash apparently met Isaiah Shin, who is the videographer for 7M, and introduced B-Dash to the church, which is run by his father, Robert Shin. So Robert has somehow Un gotten into the dance community and through B Dash by that establishing that first relationship between Isaiah and B Dash. And Isaiah actually was able to sort of meet a lot of the dancers because he was doing videography for dancers at different studios. So as Isaiah started meeting more of the people, this whole like group, B Dash and his friends, join and start talking and going to church, going to Bible study. Their girlfriends start going to Bible studies with them. The Bible studies are very secretive. The church services are very secretive. But what happens is 
at some point in 2021, all of these dancers go completely dark. I mean, I would say they're still talking to their their friends somewhat, but every single person that has come out and said anything, it's always the same story. It's that their friends are not acting the same. They seem to be very robotic. They don't answer any questions. They deflect any concern. And they are really just, they don't even know if they're who they're talking to because the responses don't even sound like their friends. People, friends then started speaking out. A friend of B Dash, who is Miranda's husband, she made a video, Samantha Long, who is a dancer. She described how her interactions with B Dash over the last year have been very tense and um, sporadic, and that when she does talk to him, he's not the same person. Light and all this was, um, you know, on the internet. I then reached out to B Dash and I texted him. If you know B Dash, you know he didn't write that statement. And I'm just going to put that there. But, um, at the end of the day, you know, when I messaged him and I was like, you know, really just honestly breaking down how I felt, uh, you know, I, I touched on like, I just, you want the best for you. Um, and how I was hurt as far as like not being invited to the wedding. I mean, that's actually like a really big thing. Um, and I mean, everything in between as far as my emotions. And his replies were like robotic. It was, it was like I was talking to a machine who didn't hear anything of the message or any of the emotions. It was like, but his brain has totally been brainwashed because he knows that I do not care about collapse. James's ex-wife spoke, I spoke with her and she came forward and spoke with me and apparently he has cut off not cut off, but really limited contact with his son and doesn't have as much ex like much to do with him. There's other dancers like uh, Tight Eyes, who is one of the founders of Crump. He had gotten involved in this as well. And because he's one of the founders, he has a lot of influence. And so I think other people sort of followed him. But thus far, it's a group of, I don't even know, there's... The biggest, most prominently featured dancers are Aubrey Fisher, uh, Vic, who goes by It's Slavic. There's a guy named Reino. Reino. There's Miranda Derrick, James Derrick, who goes by B-Dash. There's uh, Alexandra Watson, Watkins, who, and then there's uh, a woman named Kendra, who is now Willis, who is apparently Tie Dye's wife. All the guys are married too, by the way. And then Alexandra is married to someone named Gordon, and Gordon's a part of it. And then there's Concrete and Aubrey Fisher and his girlfriend Kylie. Those are like the most prominent. But the thing is, is the, this group is dancing with literally everyone, everyone. Now, what's the issue? Like, why does it matter if they joined a, a group? And what is the issue? And why is everyone calling it a cult? Well, that's because the pastor, whose name is Robert Shin, has this very, like, he runs this church and he kind of believes that he's talking to God and he's a prophet. And the church has been around since 1994. And he has a long history of maybe not being super honest about how he gets his money. I don't know. The church is called Shekinah. The church is called Shekinah Church. It's based in California. He started the church in 1994. It appears to be part of the fun, um, the Pentecostal new apostolic reform sort of movement of churches. Very charismatic. Also has the 7M, that's the management group, which is the seven mountains of influence, which is essentially that they believe that they need to infiltrate all the different facets of the world to create a sanctuary and create like a, a utopia for Jesus. And they have to really save as many souls as possible by transforming how the world views everything and looks at things. And they want everyone to be prepared for Christ. It's this group specifically is kind of a doomsday group, but on his website, uh, he says that he is called to save 1 billion souls. So it says we are called to save 1 billion souls directly and indirectly, and we are called to bridge the gap between many different streams of office 
of the five-fold ministry. They're raising up leaders, which they're called to find and teach Christians who have an abundant potential to be mighty generals of God. They are sharing the Father's love. So they're called to aggressively train God's people to develop the fruit of the Spirit, which is divine characteristics of God himself, so that may really meet God in the deepest way. They are building his sanctuary where uh, God's glory can come back to because the Je Jesus is coming back and they have to prepare for him. And they're supporting the gospel by all means. And this is the part where it gets a little bit intense because Robert Shin and his leaders of this church, they believe that their members must have, must commit their lives entirely to the ministry, meaning they have to give their time, their effort, their money, and their prayer to the ministry. So basically their ministry, they have a pastor who believes that he receives revelations and prophecies from God. And because Robert Shin believes to be an, like a, a prophet, he in many ways thinks that he speaks to God. And according to people that I've talked to, one of the key teachings of this group is all about submission and also control. So one of the big problems with what's happening in this group is that apparently, according to people I've spoken to, there is a pastor who is with his team controlling every aspect of the dancers' lives. So one of the deep, biggest concerns with this group has been that they have cut off communications with most of their friends and family. And if they continue to have relationships, they are not the same. And any individual that expresses concern is cut out by the dancers. Well, the issue at hand is that it's parading as a church, but to the outsiders, we had no idea that this was a church-based dance group. The problem is, is that the pastor has taken his role as a pastor, as a manager, and as a life organizer of these kit of these dancers to the extreme we have found out in interviewing dozens of people and that's what i've been doing almost all week is just talking and talking and talking to dancers to family members to friends of these individuals who have said that the dancers lives are so tightly controlled that they can't even make decisions that are basic one choreographer described to me about how on a job one of the dancers aubrey couldn't answer basic questions and their manager hannah had to deal with everything another dancer let me know that while they were working with one of the dancers there they found out that daniel their producer at 7m is basically mentoring the kid the dancers and i keep saying kids but they're not kids they're adults mentoring the dancers and every single decision that the da dancers make has to be run through Daniel. So the problem is, is that the managers are also their church and it's all intertwined and they're using their positions as church leaders and mentors to control. The problem also is that every decision is being monitored, bank accounts are being monitored, money is being monitored, and decisions to speak to people are being monitored. So everything that they do, they have to go through this guy named Daniel and ask him about, and if Daniel says no, they can't do it. If they wanna buy something, according to the sources I've talked to, Daniel says, no, nope, you can't do it. There's a lot to unpack with this story in the amount of control that's happening. There's a lot of concerns with just the overwhelming conflict of interest that has happened where a pastor has effectively taken people from their lives, made them cut off contact by convincing them that they're superior because he tells them that they're anointed by God and so the dancers feel like they can't talk to anybody that's not on their level because they don't have the same yoke as them, like being equally yoked, and to stay away from anyone that would influence them negatively. If they don't stay in line with their with the pastor or with their mentor, then they lose privileges. And this was one thing that Melanie had brought up in her live stream was that when she had missed one one single single church event she was not allowed or invited back to the church so i we've spoken to people that have said that the dancers when they miss time there is fear that they'll lose jobs that they'll lose uh 
access to church, that they could be told who they can and cannot talk to. They can be controlled in times of like the amount of money that they're making. And it's, it's a very, and there's the wrath of God that's pushed in on top of that. It's a very complicated story that has so many different layers. And to adequately show you in one video would be so hard because there has been so much uncovered about the pastor. There was a lawsuit from 2009 where a woman from his church accused him of mind control, coercion, and uh, pilfering $3.8 million from her. The, the lawsuit was dismissed, but one of the allegations in the lawsuit was that the church was accessing people's computers and bank accounts and using it for their own good. And the temp model of the, the members dedicating all their time, effort, and money and prayer to the church makes a lot of people concerned that even if they are getting paid, they're also paying a lot back to the church, paying a lot back to the managers. And then that level of control of having a management team dictate your every single move and who you can talk to has a lot of family members and friends wanting to get these 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 dancers out of this group. So as we start to unpack the complexities of the story, we're going to get to know the players, who are the players, why this is taking over such a deep concern in the dance community. There has been an outpouring of love and support from huge dancers with massive platforms sharing their their experiences, their hopes that this group will get freed from Robert Shin and his team. And then there's a broader conversation about whether or not what Robert Shin is doing is even legal. And if there are legal, illegal activities happening, if there's trafficking happening and what this means and what are the warning signs for someone getting involved in this. And then the predatory nature of this group, Robert Shin and his members preying on people who are at points in their career where they might be economically challenged, um, facing economic uncertainty, career uncertainty, and this group is coming and finding dancers and promising they're going to give them everything, they're going to put up all of their production, uh, they're going to make a ton of money, and they are making a ton of money right now, but the, all, the other problem is, is that on top of all that money that they're making, that money control, all of it comes with the tag of you must submit to Robert, you must obey what Robert's doing, you must wear what Robert wants you to wear, you must dance how Robert wants you to dance, you must follow Robert and through Daniel by all means necessary, or you aren't submitting to God, and if you don't submit to God, then you're gonna go to hell. It's, it's scary, it's scary how quickly people can get trapped in situations like this, and it's a complete abuse of the church, of a pastor's power, and it's concerning to a lot of people. So we're gonna, again, expand the story, get into some of the lawsuits and some of the entanglements between the different players and who's involved. This is your first video about it to sort of explain to you who's involved, um, open the door to expand the story. I could spend probably 12 hours trying to explain everything that I've been doing the past week. It would take hours upon hours upon hours. How I'll end this right now is that there has been a lot that's been uncovered since Melanie's video. We have found lawsuits for fraud. We have found that one of the, the, the attorney's uh, husbands is a convicted felon with identity theft and falsification of documents. We have found uh, multiple bankruptcies. We have found allegations of mind control coercion and uh, manipulation and using rapture and hell to con people and manipulate people to give them money, forced labor. There has been huge allegations that we're uncovering, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of, of, of LLCs that have been opened, lots and lots of aliases, where it's really just starting to like rip off Pandora's box of who are these people, who are the shins, how did this get so big, uh, what is the motivation, what is the ultimate goal, and how do you get these kids out of this to get them home to their families? Because right now they're making a lot of money and they are happy and they think they're happy even though they're cut off from the world. They're living in homes owned by the church, having their lives dictated by the church on Instagram looking like everything's great, promoting 
for everyone, making a ton of money, but they have no free will. It's it's wild when you see something so visibly looking like trafficking in front of you or uh, forced labor in front of you, allegedly, that you go, oh my gosh, how can this happen in today's day and age? And then there's the problem of how do you even convince law enforcement that this is a problem when it's an adult who's there with their free will, but is it free will when you're being manipulated and controlled and told that if you don't obey, all of your opportunities are gonna be taken away, all of your friends are gonna be taken away, you'll be punished while with internal damnation. It's a lot of the similarities between the IBLP and all the other cults we've talked about but this one specifically has a layer of secrecy that is so different than others because the church has no presence online. There's not a single picture that exists of this pastor and all the players have multiple aliases. Like, what are they hiding? Well, that's what we're gonna figure out as we dive deeper into this. This is the first installment and I know it's confusing and I hope you want, uh, will stay tuned and stay on this boat with us as we uh, go on this journey. All right, you guys, tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye, guys.